Good morning everyone. So today I am going to start the first chapter of class 12 CBSC course that is relation and functions. Relation, relations and functions. Relation and functions. Okay, we are, this is the first chapter, chapter number one. Chapter number one of class 12. So we are going to discuss about this topic. As we read the sentence relations and functions, we remember that this type of topic we have studied in class 11 also. So now we are going to discuss about the extended part of this relation and function we have studied in class 11. So what is the relation first? What is the relation? So we let, we let an A, B, A, A, B, a B A non empty. A B A non empty. Non empty set. Non empty set. Then any set R, which is a subset of which is a subset of A cross A, is called a relation on A. Let A be any non empty set, then we define a set R such that it is a subset of A cross A, then it is called a relation on A. So next step. Uh, we are going to two kinds of the relation. Number one, empty relation. Empty relation. Empty relation. Empty relation. Okay. So empty means null or void. So as we know that phi is a subset of every set. Phi is a subset of every set. So phi is also a subset of a cross a. So clearly phi is a relation on A and this relation is known as empty relation or void relation, empty relation or void relation. Let us take one example. For example, we consider a set A which contains the elements 1, 2 and 3. Now we define a set R that is a relation on R such that x comma y such that x comma y belongs to A and x plus y equal to 10. So we define like this ordered pair x comma y such that these elements are belongs to the set A and the condition x plus y equal to 10 must be satisfied. Now we observe that if we consider any two element of the set A, this will not give us 10. That is the sum of any two element of the set A will not give us 10. So according to this definition, we are not able to find any element. So that's why it is phi. So R become phi. So R is a null set. So and it is a subset of A cross A. That's why R is known as an empty relation. So if we come across this type of situation, then we'll call it an empty relation. The second one is universal relation. The second one is universal relation. So universal relation number two is universal relation. Universal relation. Universal relation. Okay. Universal relation. We know that every set is a subset of itself. Every set is a subset of itself. So A cross A is also a subset of A cross A. So A cross A is a relation on A. So this relation is known as universal relation. For example, we are going to take this one. A equal to, we consider a set same set earlier as we take. So A equal to 1, 2, 3 elements are 1, 2 and 3. And we define a set R like this x comma y such that x comma y are the elements of A and modulus of x minus y is greater than equal to 0. We consider this definition R equal to x comma y such that x comma y belongs to A and modulus of x minus y is greater than equal to 0. Now we observe that if we take any two elements from here and then modulus of x minus y will be always greater than equal to 0. If we consider both the elements as 1, then 1 minus 1 0 which is equal to 0 and if we consider the two elements like 1 and 2 then mod modulus of 1 minus 2 that will be equal to modulus of minus 1 which will give us 1 which is greater than 0. So this is a universal relation. So if we find this type of situation then we call it a universal relation. Third one is the identity relation. Third one is identity relation. Identity relation. I 
than with the relation, identity relation. Okay, identity relation. So first, so third one is identity relation. The identity relation on a set A is defined by this, like this, A comma A ordered pair A comma A for every A belongs to A. So every element of A must be related to itself. Then it is an identity relation on A. It is defined by like this. So example, if we consider A equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3, so then identity relation on A will be given by given by 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, and 3 comma 3. This is called identity relation. Suppose we have one more element like this, then like this 1 comma 2, then it is not an identity relation. Then it is not an identity relation. Identity relation will must contain only the element related to itself and all elements of A must be related. So these are the few kinds of the relations. So next we are going to discuss about next we are going to discuss about the types of relations on a set. Types of relations. Types of relations. Types of relations on a set. Types of relation on a set. Okay. Types of relation on a set. So we let let A be any non-empty set, non-empty set. A relation relation R defined on A is number one reflexive. So we consider let A be any non-empty set and a relation R defined on A, then relation R will be reflexive if and only if, if and only if A is related to A. That is A comma A belongs to R. Belongs to R for every A belongs to A. So every element should be related to itself. Then it is called a reflexive relation. Reflexive relation. Then number two is symmetric relation. Symmetric relation. Symmetric. If and only if A is related to B, then we must have B is related to A. B must be B must be related to A. B must be related to A. So that is we can say that. If A comma B belongs to R, then we must have B comma A belongs to R. For every A comma B belongs to A. So if we take any two elements from the set A, then A is related to B, then we must have B is related to A. That is, if A comma B belongs to R, then B comma A also belongs to R. For every A and B belongs to A. Then the third one is 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 the transitive relation. Transitive. Transitive relation. A relation R is said to be transitive if and only if. If A related to B, B related to C, then A related to C. For every A comma B comma C belongs to A. If A is related to B, B is related to C, then we must have A and C related. So A related to C. That is, we can say like this also. A comma B belongs to R. Then B comma C also belongs to R. Then we must have A comma C belongs to R. For every A comma B comma C belongs to the same A. So this is called transitive relation. So we get here types of relation as reflexive, symmetric and transitive. If any relation which satisfies all these three conditions, that will be called an equivalence relation. Equivalence. Equivalence. Equivalence relation. Equivalence relation. So in the next class, I will give more example to illustrate these types of relations keep watching subscribe like and comment on my channel thank you so much